Hi, I'm Jennifer Branch. Today I want to take you on a walk in the park with me and paint this beautiful sky and field. Let's paint. This is a very quick sketch, so a perfect thing to do on a late summer, fall afternoon. After work, it'll take 15 minutes to do. This one was 14 minutes with drying time. So I even cut out a little bit of that for you. I am just going on there with a the mop. I'm using Arch Rough Press Paper, so it's going to hit and miss and do all the exciting little strokes and I'm leaving lots of whites in here and here's the image it is just this is one of our favorite parks to go walk at it's beautiful fields and sky and gorgeous um, so I'm really going in with a mix of mostly cobalt blue a dash of ultramarine blue especially in the upper part of the sky so it's like that giant bowl and pushes you back with the the um purple or reds uh blues um i'm going to dash in a little bit of quinacridone rust i'm using a very limited palette only one brush this is simple um you could easily use the skoda squirrel round um or the blick squirrel round any anything that is at least a size 12 or 14 um, and round. So just dash and have some fun, you know? Let your brush dance and move and little tiny lights here and there, but leave lots of gaps. You wanna leave all that white texture. That's what gives it depth and excitement. We need those. This is a quick sketch. You don't want to be messing with gouache or any of that. You just want to let it flow. So as you can tell, it's just a very thin dash of the quinacridone rust in there. Um, barely at all. So let your brush dance. This really is a perfect little sketch to do on location. I can take care of my kids, I can paint on location, and I can do a video. And I can do any two of those things at the same time. Not all three. So, in my studio today, but this is perfect to take on location. I highly recommend at the end of the day getting your sketchbook and going to your local park. And there is always a gorgeous sky somewhere. Or at least an interesting dramatic one. Kind of a gray one. This one's beautiful though. It's, um, there's going to be rain later in the day, but so there's the huge clouds and, but they're still kind of white and fluffy at this stage. So this really is, I'm not going in. I'm, if I'm going back into the wash, I'm just tapping it, just barely touching it. I'm not scrubbing at it. I'm dashing in, painting, getting out of there. Okay, a little bit more of the quinacridone rust. I, I really, clouds really aren't white. They have white highlights on them. So I want the gray of the upcoming, it's the afternoon, going to be a storm, but gorgeous clouds in the meantime. And seriously, this takes 15 minutes. This is something you can do any day you want to do. I am the biggest fan of getting out there and sketching on location that you could possibly think of. I like doing my finished paintings in the studio, but you never know. You might turn out with your best painting ever on location. It's worth trying because you learn something new every single time you paint on location. And you get just exponentially better when you paint on location. Painting is a new way to see the world and appreciate everything about this wonderful planet we have. It's just something wonderful. I've used a little bit of cobalt violet just to push everything into the background. 
anything with a little bit more red goes back. And I'm just using just touches in the sky, just little bits. This is fun. Okay, longest drying break of the painting. About a minute. And I have a deep uh, kind of grayed green mix with cobalt blue, nickel azo yellow, bunch of stuff in there. A little bit of violet. Um, I don't want anything to stand out very much. This is the background. Don't really want to see it that much. And anything with some cobalts and violets in it, cobalt violet, um, will dry kind of chalky and it will definitely push it back a little bit. All right, so there's the little bit of grass that comes out. They've left areas, you know, for the wildlife where there's the walking and biking paths and the wildlife areas. It's really nice. I love that you can walk for two miles in the evening and it's right around the corner from the house. I'm using a little bit of quinacridone rust, and that's just to add a little bit of backlighting, a little bit of highlighting um, in the far trees. And notice, right there, it's blurring into the background. Um, I'm really not messing with that much. I'm leaving it. This is a little sketch. This is not something I have to worry about, and I'm not sure I wouldn't leave it anyways. Maybe blot it a tiny bit. The difference between a sketch and a painting is a painting will have many more layers and so it has a whole lot more depth in it. This is a sketch. It's to learn a little bit about the scene, get an idea for how you might paint it someday. Now, heavy dry brush here. I want that sparkle of the gold colors. There's just a hint in the picture, but I want just that sparkle of white in there that's very important and I want it to blur and into the background trees and also stand out in a couple of places so I get that blurred horizon line so a painting will be many more layers and so it will have much more depth much richer colors but it also takes a lot longer and it's in between layers. You're going to learn more by doing lots of sketches and then take your best sketches and do fabulous paintings on, from them. Shadow in the foreground's cliche, but you know, it works. That's why. Just make sure you don't do that in every single painting and have the exact same value pattern. Use it when it works. This is cobalt teal mixed with um, uh, azo yellow. And then I'm blurring it into the nickel azo yellow a tiny bit. So it's a very chalky green color. It's not quite the bright greens of, say, summer. It's an afternoon end of the day, green. Now notice I've pulled the cobalt blue, the cobalt violet, tiny touch of the ultramarine and some of the darker colors. Um, all these colors are repeating. It's a very limited palette and it's repeating throughout the painting. That's very important pulls the painting together. And 
Now you could have a lot of fun with this. You could do it in the fall and everything golden and you could do it in the winter, everything brown and gray, and I intend to. This is the first time I've painted this particular park and this is a fun one. Even though we go walking there all the time. Just some little squiggles. You don't want to paint every grass blade. You just want the, oh yeah, there's some tall grass back there and there's grass over there. That's it. That is all the information that's needed. Suggestion. And let me tell you, it's a lot harder to suggest something than to just paint every single little detail. Every detail, easy. Suggestion, difficult, because you have to know what to put there and what to leave out and knowing exactly the minimum amount that you need to put down that is what makes you an artist minimum amount that you need to tell your story and to tell you the truth this one could actually be even shorter i could do one line for the background and yeah, not the interesting little dashes in the sky and the ground, but, you know, this is my story. And I kind of had thoughts of making this into a bigger painting at some point, so I like to explore. Finger painting is good. I hope this has inspired you to go out and sketch this weekend and just have some fun with it and let your brush dance. If you want to see cheat sheet on it and um, reference photo, all that sort of thing, go to my website at paintingwatercolor.com. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate every single one of you. Thank you. Happy painting.